Now we just finished reading and writing raw bytes to and from a file. The next thing we're going to do is look at filter input stream and filter output stream and what these classes or objects do is they filter the bytes in some way. In other words, they organize them in groups that are somehow meaningful. For example, an integer that is a normal integer in Java would be a 32-bit integer which means it consists of a total of four bytes. If we want to read integers from a file, they aren't treated then as raw bytes, but they're groups of four bytes together four at a time because integers are 32-bit quantities. On the other hand, if we were reading long integers, those are eight-byte integers or 64-bit integers. And what would happen here is if we tried to read a long integer using filter input stream, we would get eight bytes of raw data which together would constitute a long integer. Similarly, a double is also an 8-byte object, and we would get all 8 bytes organized together and interpreted appropriately and decoded as a double. And we'll actually look at an example of that in one of our demos later. So whether we are inputting or outputting, it may be useful to have these filter streams that allow us to organize bytes so that, for example, on the way in, a particular number of bytes comes from the file to constitute the particular type of primitive, for example, that you're interested in reading. Or when you're writing, the same is true as well. If I write a long integer out to a disk file, I don't want to have to bother myself with the fact that it actually consists of eight individual bytes all that have to go in order. I rather just tell the output stream that here is my long integer, you figure it out, and it will then take that and package it up into a group of eight bytes and write them out one at a time in sequence to represent that eight, those eight pieces of that long integer. Now those last two classes on the previous slide are actually one inheritance level up from what we are actually going to be able to use. We'll be using data input stream to talk to filter input stream and data output stream to talk to filter output stream. So this is where the conversion between primitive types and strings of bytes will occur. Here's the UML diagram for the data input stream. You'll notice the inheritance part of the UML diagram off to the left hand side that is that uh, data input stream inherits from filter input stream which inherits in turn from input stream and that data input stream implements the data input interface. This is an interface used for input so obviously all of the methods start with the word read and all of the different types of primitives are represented here so we can read a boolean, a byte, a char, a float, a double, an int, a long, a short, a read line, which would be a line of text, which means a string. And finally, read UTF. We'll look at UTF in more detail in slides to come. In any case, this alleviates the burden from the programmer of having to figure out how many bytes are involved and what order they should be in and so on and so forth. He simply says, I want to read along and this class and interface will, and this inheritance chain will take care of everything for you automatically and and worry about the lower level I.O. in terms of how many bytes, what order, etc. and you don't need to worry about that. So this is still binary I.O. now but you're able to think at about it at a slightly higher level and just say I want to write it, read a double or I want to read a float or I want to read a short and everything else from there happens automatically for you. So this is very convenient. In this UML diagram, we have the counterpart of the previous slide, that is the output end of things now. You'll notice then the diagram is otherwise very similar. We have the same sort of chain of inheritance, that is that data output stream inherits from filter output stream, which in turn inherits from output stream, and data output stream implements the data output interface. Now because we're dealing with output, all of the reads you saw on the previous slide are showing now as writes. Apart from that, it's the same idea that we saw on the previous slide. That is, that you don't need to worry about the low-level details about how many bytes are involved with the primitive that you're interested in, in this case, writing to, and you don't need to worry about what order those bytes are supposed to be written in. You simply say, here's the thing I want to write, and this class takes care of it for you completely and does the appropriate binary uh, output, in this case, to the file.